Hi, and uh, welcome back to um, welcome back to my YouTube uh, channel, if that's what you want to call it. Uh, if you've visited it before, if not, hello. Um, and uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to be talking about uh, my latest musical acquisition, which is another one step, but this one's a bit different. It's not by mobile fidelity. So um, I've explained the one step process in great detail in my previous videos. So if you haven't uh, seen those, do pop back and have a look. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, the subject of today's is an album that, um, I mean, I would say is unanimously regarded as an audiophile classic. Um, what's an audiophile classic, you might say? Uh, well, it can be a very dodgy thing. It can be um, you know, a term that's, uh, that someone probably wouldn't welcome very much. Um, but basically it means that the audiophile community, people who like hi-fi, uh, appreciate great sound, um, have kind of adopted and use it as a demo record, etc., etc. So it's from, from the mid '90s. This this particular record was recorded in 1994. From the mid '90s onwards, this has been an absolute staple at hi-fi shows. And uh, when I think of the record, it is it's you know does it bring back memories? Yeah, it brings back memories, but it's of demos at hi-fi shows or in shops or wherever. Um, it's not of uh, parties or gigs or this, that, or the other, like um, like uh, what I would say non-audiophile music would be. Anyway, well, the best non-audiophile music. Anyway, that's not to detract from it because it's uh, it's 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 a it's a fantastic record. It's just um, it has been adopted by the audiophile community, and there's very 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 good reason. So here we are. Now this isn't the record I'm kind of talking about today. That's still in its packet down there. But this was the first vinyl pressing I bought of this. Um, and this, I believe, is a 2011 yeah, uh, reissue. And, um, well, reissue, it's remastered, it's remixed, in fact. It's not even just remastered, it's remixed by the original engineer. Now, the original, the original recording was made in 1994. Um, in uh, Chicago and the original recording engineer was Jim Anderson and he did a, a staggeringly good job I mean absolutely staggeringly good it's um, the music is really nice it's it's kind of it's very smoky cool smooth laid-back jazz just really cool jazz um, it's a four-piece band you've got Patricia Barber on piano and vocals and then me looking at the back because my brain is uh, uh, full of so much stuff I can't remember the important bits. John McLean on guitars and the guitar sound on this is just it's it's on fire it's so dynamic. Uh, Michael Arnapole I don't know how you pronounce that on bass and again the bass sound well the sound of everything actually on this is just stunning and Mark Walker on drums and percussion. Now I'll talk about the original it's just, um, it's stunning. It's so dynamic. Uh, the music is, is you know, you'll love it or you'll hate it, frankly. Um, I would very much suggest you just go on YouTube or Spotify or Tidal or whatever you use and have a quick listen. Because if, if, if you're going to like it, you'll love it. If it's not going to do anything for you, it doesn't really matter how good it sounds. Um, although you might still want to buy it because the sound quality is unbelievably good okay um sparse spacious smoky cool laid-back jazz okay beautifully played beautifully played now the original um i'm not so familiar with the original to be honest i, I do have it on cd somewhere but frankly i god knows when i last played it but the original uh would have been i do believe i, I wouldn't i wouldn't put money on this well, I wouldn't bet my life on it. I put a bit of money on it. I do believe the original was a digital recording. But you might think, well, sis, digital recording, how can that be so fantastic? Well, you know, we'll get to that maybe. But uh, I, was a, I believe the original is a digital recording with like oodles and oodles of uh, reverb added left, right and centre. And I guess, digital reverb, I guess. Um, and the people that moan about it kind of say, 
uh, you know, her voice hasn't got any reverb and then the hand claps have got like, you know, five seconds of reverb and the piano's got, you know, two seconds of reverb and the bass has got like no reverb and the drums have got like, you know, and um, I mean, that's a fair possible, you know, it's possibly a fair, you know, it's a construct. It's um, it's not a live recording, it's a construct. They're, 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 it is dripping in reverb and to say that maybe some of the reverb doesn't kind of match and it makes it a little bit disjointed. Well, you know, maybe that is true. Maybe you could say that. But the overall sonic effect is, is still quite jaw-dropping. Now, what this is, is the 2011 remix. Um, and the original uh, engineer, mix engineer, Jim Anderson, took the original uh, recording, which, well, tapes, I mean, I guess in 94 tapes, it, maybe it was on tape, but it would have been on a, uh, um, if it was on tape, it would have been PCM tapes, you know, like digital, digital, um, you know, or DAT or something. But, uh, you know, anyway, this is assuming the original is digital, which I'm pretty damn certain it is. So, um, he took this along to Capitol Studios and remixed it. And he remixed it, adding, uh, apparently adding uh, natural analog um, reverb using the, the reverb chambers uh, capital. And um, created, a, yeah, created a new master uh, from which um, the, this and other, I think most subsequent present re releases would have been made from. Now this is made the 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 um, the analog master tape here was produced by none other than Bob Ludwig, who uh, you'll probably have heard of, and he is a bit of a legend in mastering. So you know we're kind of like just notching up the um, the brownie points here. This is you know it's it's, it's getting um, better and better and better. And then the mastering for vinyl for this particular pressing was done by Doug Sachs, another absolute god in the world of mastering. So uh, in terms of the processes and who this has been through, you kind of can't get better. Now, a lot of you, I know, are going to be thinking, well, a lot of you haven't heard this because anyone who has heard this will know what I'm talking about. It's stunning. A lot of you might be saying, oh, it's digital recording then. Well, yeah. I know where you're coming from, but um, I mean, I'm not a recording engineer. Uh, I, can, I can hear what I hear. This does sound good. And there are plenty of digital recordings that sound really good. And it's kind of impressive in a different way. Um, I mean, I, I, you know, I, am a, I am a bit of an artist and what I would kind of liken this to is sort of the difference between oils and acrylics if you imagine you know this is a piece of art it's a, it's something that is made for you to listen to and get enjoyment from same as a painting is uh and they happen to have you know the original recording happened to have been done digitally by you know same people who would have done it if it was 10 years earlier and made been made analog but uh it's kind of it's just the medium now for me you know, yeah, you can you can kind of tell a digital recording. I mean, a bad one's awful, obviously, but bad analog recording's awful too. Um, I kind of, yeah, think of it as analog um, oils and acrylics. Now, an acrylic is basically it's a plastic kind of thing, whereas an oil is a you know it's kind of an organic thing. You've got linseed oil, you've got um, turpentine, uh, wax, and um, the pigment ground up in it. And in use, some people prefer oils, some people prefer acrylics. I actually prefer oils, but, but you know, acrylics dry quicker, this, that and the other. Um, oils, you know, there a lot of people say about oils, ah, oh, yeah, the good thing about oils is you can push them around, you can scrape them off, you can make a mistake. You can, yeah, you can, but when you scrape them off, you don't get it all off, it gets a little bit muddy. When you push it around, it gets a little bit muddy. So um, I think that's quite a good analogy in a way for analog recording because yeah, it's all super natural, super organic, but you know, everything you do does have an effect. 
Whereas in the digital world, if you scrub it out, it's clean again. Um, I mean, acrylics are more like oils, but there is this sort of sheen to an acrylic. There's a, there's a plasticity, if you like. Uh, and, uh, and and so there we have it. That's that's my that's my two pennies worth on uh, analog versus digital. But basically, the you know the the remaster remix of this is is um, you know and this is mastered into analog. So for the vinyl, and this sounds absolutely stunning. Now this is probably a you know it's a gatefold thing. It's um, oh, there's the original clean film. It might tell me on that. 100, 100, high quality, 180 gram, two LP set, well, well, 33 and a third RPM, remixed and remastered. Um, it's fantastic. I couldn't recommend this enough. So I don't know how much this cost, maybe 50, 60, 70 quid. I don't know. Can't remember. Bought it a good few years ago. Um, so there's that. Now, next thing to come along, I've got this um, sideline. To, to my day job, which is doing PR in the hi-fi industry, and I run the Reel to Reel Rambler website because, frankly, tape is a passion, and and frankly, analog recordings without a doubt, there's no closer you're going to get. So when I heard that this was being being made available, very limited release, I, I couldn't not buy it. Now. The retail price of these was five hundred pounds, five hundred dollars. So, add on duty, shipping, all the rest of it, VAT, probably cost me about six hundred pounds for these. But you get, you know, you get, you get two tapes, and I mean, this is a one-to-one -one copy, a one-to-one -one copy from that master that was used to make, you know, this and everything thereafter. You get. A clip and you get two reels of tape and there, there aren't that many albums where the official there is an official tape release uh so here we go had to get it just had to even though it's a digital recording but you know it's mastered to tape this is a copy one-to-one -one copy from those tapes it's um now the interesting thing is you can think holy crap you know that's 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 pretty awesome uh how does that sound? Well, it sounds different to this. And yeah, we've got to say it sounds better. But, you know, it costs, let's say for argument's sake, this was 100 quid. I can't remember how much it was, but let's say it was. And let's say these are 600 quid landed. So it's six times the price. And you need a, I mean, I've got a couple of Studas and a Technics reel to reels. So, you know, a couple of pro studio tape recorders, um, you know, service up, they're going to set you back 10, minimum 10 grand, I'd say. Um, sure, you can buy an old beaten up reel to reel machine for 500 quid, but I certainly wouldn't put one of these tapes on it, wouldn't put one of these tapes anywhere near it. So it's, it's, yeah, you know, these are kind of my reference and actually having these makes it really interesting which is kind of why i want to get and do a you know a, a follow-up to this for the listening once i've heard what's coming but these are stunning but what they don't do is they don't really detract from this i mean the bass is better you know the bass on tape you don't need to do those tricks of compressing and modeling the bass all that the other the bass is undoubtedly better and the dynamic range is is a touch better but i mean you know so pressed over four sides, you've got a little, you've got, you know, you can get quite a lot of dynamic range in there. So anyway, to the subject of today's video, here we go. Again, from my friend David Brook at Mains Cables R Us, MCIU and TheVinylAdventure.com. I do believe it's .com. Yeah, TheVinylAdventure.com. Give him his plug because uh, he did send this to me which I'm very grateful. And um, let's, uh, let's open this up and see what we're talking about. Never quite know. Every time I get a record, it seems to be in some, someone's reinvented record packaging. This is a reinvented... Oh, okay, let's separate stuff in. Let's get rid of all that. 
Right over. Right over there. Um, okay. What do we got here? And here we go. There we go. I have to do some more opening before I can slide them out. Now. Okay. Fancy. So. Okay. One of my first questions I can, <laughs> I can answer myself is I don't actually know who was making this. Now I do. Impex Records. So there we go. Impex Records. Um, deluxe packaging, new booklet, strictly limited to 5,000 pressings. Okay, I knew there was 5,000 copies. I've explained before about the one-step process. It's, it's a no-brainer. It absolutely improves the fidelity of vinyl records quite massively, actually, because instead of, um, instead of five stages of moulding, if you like, of record production, there are three. Um, and if you only consider the moulding rather than cutting, then there's one instead of three. So it's um it's just it is it is it's crisper it's it's closer to the mark it's it, it's it's um it's, it's much 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 better. Problem is you know there's a reason why there's all those extra processes because people make you know you make more than one mother you make more than one father you make more than one stamper. Well, you certainly make more than one mother and one more than one stamper, uh, <clears throat> and uh, that allows you to go into production and make. 10,000, 100,000, you know, million LPs, whatever, um, from one lacquer. This, you get 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 tops. They've chosen to do 5,000, sensible number, but that's it. That's it. If they wanted to do another run, they'd have to make another lacquer, which means cutting another record, and that's a big job. So, anyway, Impex Records. Uh, really nice cloth. Well, I've still got the cling film on, but let's get that off in a minute. Um, cloth bound box, right? Just get a scalpel. Kind of, I like to open things with a scalpel when they're this nice because, um, you know, it just keeps them nice. So I'll just slice down there. I will have to, um, as I say, I'll have to listen to this. I've just actually, re I just just this morning, actually, I, I listened to uh, my um, premonition vinyl copy and the tape, again, just to refresh my memory. And, and the, I mean, honestly, they both, you know, they both sound really, really bloody good. I mean, you wouldn't, you know, don't, don't think that that's a, you know, you must go out and buy a tape and... Um, well, this, is a, yeah, this is a good job, isn't it? Right. Okay, okay. Clean film off. There we go. Clean film off. I'll save that though because it's, it's some printed info on it. So uh, that's a nice solid box. That really is a solid box. Nice. And as you see, number 1,461 out of 5,000. Jolly good. So pop that down there. <clears throat> and other than that, it seems to be in um, a reasonably standard double, well, good good quality, solid, but double okay, fold cover. So let's have a look what we've got in here. Okay, this is where it changes. So it's... Um, Let's have a look. We've got okay. We've got one record in there. Now this is interesting. This is forty-five RPM too, and the other one's um thirty-three RPM. So again, although both fit on two records. So we've got okay. Let's have a look at the actual records. So. Um, I'm assuming that's 180 grams, it certainly doesn't feel like 200 grams. 
So one step record, like the mobile fatalities, and, and funny enough, I can tell you straight away, that is pressed on, if not the same, a very similar vinyl. It's got the same color and it is also, it's virtually transparent. So I'd imagine this is uh, the same vinyl as mobile fatality gives. Um, so expect that to be quiet, spookily quiet. And frankly, that's one of the very, you know, I mean, tiniest, tiniest, tiniest little ticks on my vinyl, my existing vinyl pressing is, is, is one of the only um, things you could really hold against it. I mean, and, and I'm talking tiny, tiny, tiny ticks. So, <clears throat> very nice. Very nice piece of vinyl. And I have to just have a look in here and see what else we got in here, because it's kind of like a triple gatefold. So... Cover. Healthy ones in there. Nice pasted on, is it? No, a nice, yeah, a nice matte finished photo. Um, and here we have produced by Patricia Barber, executive producer Michael Friedman, blah, 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 blah. Record. Okay, so here we go. This was, I wasn't sure about this. You know, remixed April 2011 from the original Master Tapes by Jim Anderson at Capitol Studios. So again, this is again, I like my tape, I like the other one. This is from the 2011 remix, which, uh, which I think sounds uh, stunning. Um, Whereas the uh, whereas the other was remastered by Bob Ludwig, was it for final? I think it was. Um, this one is mastered by Kevin Gray of Coherent Audio for uh, <clears throat> for vinyl, and it's pressed at RTI um, in California. So basically. And the vinyl mastering is done by someone else. So we've got Kevin Gray here versus Bob Ludwig here. Sorry, Doug Sachs. So I think they're both from the Bob Ludwig tape, but this one's Doug Sachs, vinyl master, and this one's Kevin Gray, vinyl master. So that will prove interesting. I will, you know, you expect a different sound, basically, um, not just the different, uh, not just the different um, quality of the press, if you like. Um, and what we got here? Okay. Um, nice, very, very nice book. Okay, you don't get this in the original at all or anything. This is a nice booklet. I see that there's some um, there's text in here from Patricia Barber herself and dated 2019. So <clears throat> she's you know this has been gone back and looked at. Uh, and there we have the there is um can you see this? This is uh, Jim Anderson, the uh, recording engineer, mix engineer, inside one of Capital's reverb chambers. So this would have been 2011 when they remixed it using the analog chambers, the, the, the you know natural physical chambers. Um, so uh, yeah, there we have it really. So beautiful cover, nice cover, nice booklet. All the stuff you kind of would expect on a, you know, a. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say this is a premium pressing. I would say this was, uh, you know, this is kind of like the crown jewels pressing. So along with the uh, mobile fidelities, it's pressed on, it looks like it's pressed on the same vinyl. Now they call their vinyl VR, what did they call it? Um, don't know, can't find it now. Oh, here we go. A VR 19 Supreme, uh, I think. Neotech vinyl, yeah, right, VR, VR 9. It's very, very likely that's what mobile fidelity use. Um, you know, it's very, 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 very similar anyway. Uh, and this basically, 
this all explains the one step process which is which is you know it's an absolute no brainer now this is not a cheap record this is 185 quid here in the uk um and i've said it before it's you know there's 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 reasons for this they can't make more they've made five thousand that's it that's the whole point of this one step process is you know you get a much much higher quality product but you don't get as many of them so you've got to charge more it's as simple as that and even if they were able to turn them out i mean it's it's got a lovely box the, the quality of the vinyl it's printed on and everything else um so it stands to i would be surprised if if sonically it doesn't whop the original well the nine the 2011 premonition pressing uh, you know, if it doesn't warp it into second place in terms of the vinyl pressings. Um, of course, you know, that's purely through virtue of being 45 RPM one step. Then you've got the difference in the mastering. Now, um, I'm going to wrap this up for now. Um, and uh, we'll see how this sounds. I'll, I'll come back to you when I've had a listen. But... Um, you know, what I would say is a really interesting thing is this is from the 2011 remix tapes. One step process mastered by Kevin Gray. This is from the 2011 remix tapes mastered by Doug Sachs or mastered for vinyl. I think they're both mastered originally by Bob Ludwig. Again, can't get much better. And these, of course, there's two tapes because that's how it works. One for each side. Um, and these are one-to-one -one copies of those tapes. So I have kind of got the reference here. I've got the, uh, I can reference these to that, see how they sound, how they differ. And as I said, this sounds fantastic, phenomenal, utterly recommendable. It doesn't sound quite the same. You know, that's that'll be A, because it's on vinyl, B, because Doug Sachs has had his hand in it. You know, a mastering engineer's job is to take a, you know, what's on tape, so to speak, and interpret it, produce it as best he can for vinyl, because, you know, each each medium can only cope with so much. It has, they each medium has its own limitations. So you've got to treat the, uh, treat the source appropriately. Um, so we'll we'll see how this one is done. Uh, thanks very much for um, for uh, watching, and uh, I will be back uh, possibly extremely quickly, maybe maybe very unlikely later this afternoon, but but quite likely tomorrow. With um, having once I've had a listen to these, uh, and um, give you a bit of a verdict on it. Okay, thank you very much. Cheers. Bye bye now. Bye.